Hey guys, welcome back to the Eating Disorder Awareness Week series. I am Mel and today I'm going to be talking about the different types of eating disorders but focusing on what I suffer with, which is bulimia nervosa. But to start off with, I wanted to say that there are just many other types of eating disorders, not just bulimia nervosa. So to start off with, bulimia nervosa, it's an eating disorder, pretty simple, but it's not just as simple as that. You've got anorexia nervosa, you've got binge eating disorder, but then there's also avoidment, avoidment, retake, intake disorder. I don't know if I'm saying that right, I am probably not. But I will be listing the other types of eating disorders right here. So to cut to the chase, bulimia is when you um, restrict your intake of food, but then because you're restricting your intake of food, you are building up this hunger. And for me, I tend to go a day without eating, all day without eating, and then the binging starts at night. Let me explain what the binging and purging is about. So, like I said, you build up hunger, hunger, hunger throughout the day and then all of a sudden you just want to binge on everything. So binge means when you have so much intake of food, large amounts of food. I could have noodles, I could have garlic bread, I could have chicken, I could have everything that you could think of in one sitting of food. But after that, your mind tells you that you shouldn't have done that you need to pay for that so that's when pur purging comes in and that's when you go to the toilet and you basically bring it back up not very nice and i've been doing that for 13 years ongoing something along them lines and it's it's not it's not fun at first you think you've got control of it you think oh i can i can do whatever i want with this i can eat whatever i want and then bring it back up no 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 it doesn't work like that it doesn't that's what i thought at first and then i learned the hard way i learned that the bulimia becomes you it takes control of you what you thought you had control of if that makes sense as your body is isn't getting the fuel it needs to do everyday jobs you start to notice uh, physical symptoms and emotional symptoms and mental symptoms but like i said before with uh, the large amount of servings if for an example if i was sat at the table with four other people or three other people i could have their food as well as just mine that's how bad uh, bulimia can get that's how bad the binging can get it depends how hungry you are how emotional you are and overall what your bulimia is telling you in your head but to some people uh they just think oh you can just eat regularly and you get into a pattern it's not that simple for bulimia or anyone who suffers with eating disorder there's a thing called the binge and purge cycle which i will put a graphic thing here <laughs> explaining it so as i said as you can see number one is tension and cravings this is when the cravings start building up you look at food and you think oh i want that oh i want this i want that when you are surrounded by thoughts in your head saying that you need to eat you will eat anything that you can see and everything yeah, you can see. That sounds so weird, but it's so true at the same time. Number two is when the actual binge eating takes place. This can take place in under five minutes. It can take place in an hour. It, it just depends who you are, what your bulimia is telling you and how much you are eating really. Number three is purging, to avoid weight gain. And this is not always gonna be the result. 
in your head your bulimia is telling you if you eat you need to bring it back up so then you stay the same weight but when you go to weigh yourself you can put weight on because you are binging you can put weight on it's it's not a way to lose weight it's it's a battle and you don't want to get into that you do not want to be dragged down by an eating disorder telling you what to do when you think you've got full control over it when you don't you you really don't number four is shame and disgust i feel this on a daily basis after i've binged and let me tell you it's very horrible you sit there you feel like it's it's the, a depression bubble people who suffer with depression it's very like that uh, you go into a depressive episode where you feel like you're no good you are fat you all these other types of thoughts that are coming into your head and you don't know who to go to you've only got your bulimia you think bulimia is your friend and that's why you do the cycle again so to be stuck in a cycle like that for how many years it's just a never-ending nightmare i've known people who have been who have had bulimia for nearly over 20 years and i really don't want to be one of them people but so far 13 years it's quite a long time but we'll see what happens And then the last part of the chart is to start dieting. That's when you restrict your intake of food. So this can, again, be for days, for hours, for weeks. And it's not healthy. It, it, it's just a cycle that's going around and round and round. And what you need to do is break that cycle, which is very hard to do. And that's what I'm in the middle of doing. <laughs> But to talk about the physical effects, you get tooth decay, you get body dysmorphia, you can get severe heart problems and pains all over your body. And the ones that I suffer with is a bit of tooth decay, a bit, not that much. Pain is in the heart by here and you can feel like your bones are breaking. It feels like they're going to snap. So recently I went to a Young Blood concert which was the best gig ever. I just can't fault him. I've been to many before but he was just one of kind. But I really felt it that time. It was just a couple of days ago I went in Manchester and I fell down the stairs and I hurt my back. But then also I hurt my leg and I'm limping on my leg. And normally I haven't had that pain before so that might be why, but with uh, bulimia nervosa, you don't have calcium going through your bones to keep you strong because you are bringing it all back up. What I survive on is soda, which is not healthy. Not healthy at all, but that's the thing that gives me the energy to do the things I do. And another physical effect is always being tired. If you know me, I always sleep. I am sleeping non-stop. And if you are talking to me, I'm probably fast asleep anyway. <laughs> but I, another physical sign was getting rid of a full-time job. I can't hold a full-time job because I'm incapable of having the energy to do that. I have a part-time job which I absolutely adore working with kids so I'm running around but that does it for me that that's enough for me and I'm proud to say that I have actually got a job part-time doing what I love and then coming home to being absolutely flat out I just want to sleep you can also get dehydrated and your face swells up for me, dehydration ha happens sometimes because I drink a lot, but when I don't drink, I can notice the difference. When, again, when I went to the concert, I didn't drink for a couple of hours because I didn't want to go running back into the toilet. 
but I noticed my sugar levels going down, 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 down because I had no energy. But when uh, Dom came on stage, boom, I had a bit of a drink, boom, I'm, 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 a, I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm, oh. <laughs>